Hello YouTube. Uh, today we're going to discuss the fact that every single prime uh, other than two is the difference of two squares. And we're going to show that why that is and some implications of that. So tune in for the fun. Uh, we'll try to make this short because uh, I don't want to go too long with this. But um, I, I have a uh, Pythagorean triplet, x squared minus y squared, 2xy, and then the hypotenuse, which is x squared plus y squared. By the way, speaking of x squared plus y squared, there is, for 4n plus 1 primes, they are the sum of two squares. There is a proof of that, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the difference of squares. So, and the fact that they're, every single prime other than 2 is a unique difference of squares. Okay, so notice I have my x squared minus y squared corresponding to the base. Um, I happen to choose the base and not the height for that. You could, you could flip it and, and have this... This is the base and this is the height, but we'll just keep it as the base. And I want to find an x and a y such that x squared minus y squared is equal to p. And sure enough, if I go down here, um, but we're going we're to find that and then we're going to attempt to show uniqueness from that. So um, if I go down here and I have x equals p plus 1 over 2 and y equals p minus 1 over 2, substitute that in for x squared minus y squared, I will get p. Uh, this will work. And it will work for every single odd value of p. Um, now I need to show uniqueness. Well, notice that if you plug in p plus 1 over 2 for x and y, um, they will add up to p. x plus y will add up to p. And then subtract them, x minus y will add up to 1. You can work this out on your paper, you'll see. Okay. Well, notice this is p times 1 equals p. Well, note that that's unique. There are no other factors of p other than p and 1. And x plus y is not going to be equal to 1 because we're not counting negative numbers here. Um, so x plus y must be p and x minus y must be 1. Establishing for every va odd value of p and a unique value of x and y, because again, if you solve it as a system of equations, um, x plus y equals p and x minus y equals 1, you will get x equals p plus 1 over 2 and y equals p minus 1 over 2 and that'll be unique for every odd value of p. So that proves that every odd p is, is equal to x squared minus y squared, some unique difference of squares. It also means that p plus a square gets you a square in a unique way. Um, for instance, 13 plus a square equals a square. Well, 13 plus 6 squared equals 7 squared. And sure enough, then that's unique, okay? And sure enough, your 7 would be uh, 13 plus 1 over 2, and your 6 would be 13 minus 1 over 2, and that's unique. Now, furthermore, we can, we can figure from that that if we have our x squared minus y squared is equal to p, we'll note that if I square the base, that's going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the height squared. And we prove that down here by squaring p, uh, squaring x, remember x squared minus y squared is equal to p, so when we square p, we square x squared minus y squared, and we get this, x to the fourth minus 2x squared y squared plus y to the fourth, and we've confirmed, well confirmed that that is the difference of squares, it's the difference of x squared plus y squared squared minus 2xy squared, and sure enough, that's the hypotenuse squared minus the height squared, exactly, and since our x and y are unique, these will be a unique difference of squares. Now, plug, let's change, you can think of it like a recursion. Plug in x squared minus y squared equals p squared here. Okay, change it from p to p squared. Lo and behold, you'll have the same unique difference of squares, um, the hypotenuse squared minus the height squared, and it'll be unique. Okay, so maybe if it helps you, instead of x and y, you can make it a and b. Um, substitute this for a and this for b. So a squared minus b squared equals p squared. And then you'll prove that from that, if you square that and make it p to the fourth, you also prove that that's a unique difference of squares. p to the eighth is a unique difference of squares. p to the sixteenth is a unique difference of squares. So on and so forth. Now that's remarkable. I mean, to me, that's really that's really cool. That's the kind of stuff I groove on. Uh, but I'm just sort of like that. Now, last thing we can prove here, um, make this quick, is that no prime can be the difference of a fourth power integer minus a fourth power integer. 
Um, and let's prove that simply. You have x squared plus y squared. Well, x to the fourth minus y to the fourth is equal to x squared plus y squared times x squared minus y squared. Okay, simple, simple mathematics there. x squared plus y squared has to equal p. Now that's possible because a p in the 4n plus 1 form will be the sum of squares. But x squared minus y squared will never equal 1 for an integer, unless it's 1 and 0. But 1 and 0 don't, 1 minus 0 does not equal a prime because 1 doesn't count as a prime these days. So, um, yeah. So we've just shown here that since x squared minus y squared cannot equal 1, and again, a prime can only have p and 1, it can only have a factor of 1 in itself. Um, since this x squared minus y squared cannot equal 1, sure, sure, sure enough, x to the fourth minus y to the fourth cannot equal a prime number as we understand primes today, which excludes the value of 1. Thank you very much.